today's episode we're going to be making these salt and pepper shakers. Enjoy. Alright, for the salt and pepper shakers we're going to be making uh, the patterns or plans that I created and uh, I will explain what all this gibberish looks like here and what it means. But to start, I started out sketching the layers of the wood and since you've already seen uh, what the salt and pepper shakers look like uh, you have a better idea of what this means. The layers of wood are what these lines mean. The salt and pepper shakers are three inches high by an inch and a half wide. At the top we have a quarter inch and as you know it's contrasting between uh, maple and walnut and uh, for the pepper shakers it's going to be the main color is walnut and for the uh, salt it's going to be maple. So the nice thing about scrolling as a hobby in the art of woodworking uh, scrolling you can use a lot of scraps so that's what I'll be using and uh, I have some 3 8 inch thick for the uh, main stuff and then for the contrasting between the pepper shakers and salt I have some quarter inch so it all makes some more sense once I stack up the pieces to actually uh, glue it together but what I have here is since uh, I made it three inches tall to add in the quarters at the top middle and bottom for the contrast and then three three inch pieces in between so if that makes any sort of sense to you guys uh, congratulations but if it doesn't you'll see as the uh, video goes on here and then since I can't really stack cut a lot of three eighths so I guess I could I just cut out or uh, Donner, shut up! I just made up a whole bunch of these circles here for the uh, patterns of the uh, salt and pepper shakers there are the diameter is an inch and a half and then I just made it like a quarter inch uh, thick that way when I sand them you know I have some meat to uh, still have left over there so it's uh, not any certain number I just printed off a bunch and I'll be using them so what I'll do is I will put the pattern of circles on uh, the various pieces and then we'll start cutting them out and by the way the top and bottom of the salt and pepper shakers I will work on at the uh, after I get all of them cut out and glued up because I'll be sanding and then I'll be doing something uh, a little bit unique with the top and then the bottom will just be flat of course so that will just be a solid circle so uh, I'll go ahead and get the pattern on all of it and we'll be ready to cut out and then uh, I'll show you the process that we'll do for the top uh, after it's all uh, this portion of the country scroller is brought to you by root beer just kidding so here's the pieces we have the patterns on and uh, may not look as many pieces or circles as you saw because it's not what I have is the two uh, ones maple walnut that have the three pieces of uh, quarter inch on it and uh, just like all the others I use the pattern with masking tape then the pattern clear box tape all around it since I'm stack cutting all these I use this little uh, three quarter inch pin nail and all these combined are three quarter so uh, it doesn't go all the way through the end so that's good so I just pounded it and then bent it over just to hold it a little bit extra and I figured three would be too much to cut at once so uh, speed it up I did cut two and uh, cutting each individual one would take forever so we can go ahead and do our entry holes and it's just one per circle of course and then I uh, go over to the scroll saw and we'll discuss the blade size and start cutting them out I already have all the holes drilled into the uh, circle pieces that we'll be cutting and uh, the blade I selected is a number five ultra reverse uh, ultra reverse may not be that aggressive but that's only a number five I have I don't have the uh, just straight uh, teeth there uh, number five because it has uh, more TPI which means teeth per inch than a number seven but uh, it's not too small like a number three so it's one of those medium blades that you can do thick work and still be good with so uh, I'll start by cutting it out of the uh, speed turned up all the way here and uh, get her done
this was the uh, three things. So the uh, for the maple bowl it has or for the maple shaker it has the three uh, pieces of quarter inch walnut. So now we can go ahead and move to the outside of this. And uh, since I stack cut, I've uh, mentioned this, but you have to drill a hole uh, in the workpiece there. That way, if you enter from a, the side and cut it out, it'll break away and you may not be able to hold all three pieces. So that's why you tape it all together, use the nail, and then drill a entry hole to uh, keep it all uh, together. Or cutting. And then this piece has the nail in it. Uh, these pin nails are rather cheap. You can get a pack of 100 for like a buck at Walmart. So this whole piece here, the form, I can just toss in the uh, trash can. So I'm left with three circles for uh, the maple salt shaker. So I can uh, just go ahead and do this whole process for all the rings. And then I will be back with you to show you all the rings cut out. And we'll be able to uh, start stacking them up, glue them up, and uh, go from there. Alright, so I'm off the scroll saw here, and I have just stacked them up to what they will look like, sort of. As you can see, this is the maple base one, so this will be the salt. And it has the contrast marines at the top, middle, and bottom. And uh, I haven't cut out a bottom yet, but I will make that out of uh, some eighth inch walnut or something. Just to blend it in there with the uh, walnut quarter inch bottom. And then I will use a uh, maple top or something, and then a... Uh, walnut top on this one just to a so the top you know the most color on it will this will be a salt shaker and then this will be a pepper since it has mostly walnut so uh, that's just a little design I created I guess so uh, uh, nothing fancy about it so I will just go ahead and cut out the uh, top or the bottom circles that will be an uh, inch and a half in diameter and uh, no hole in them of course and I'll just glue them onto the bottom and then I will talk about what I'll do with the uh, tops where it will have the uh, salt and pepper coming out uh, after I get this all glued up and sanded because I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue them up and sand them and then that way I can sand the inside of them easier which I guess it doesn't really matter since you won't even be able to see them but uh, just easier to uh, work with so I will go ahead and prepare for the glue up now I just like to take a scrap piece of wood in this case this is walnut squirt the Aleens clear gel tacky glue out there I ran out of those little craft brushes so I just have one of these little sponge brushes and I will uh, not be uh, clean with the glue because it'll I'll be sanded to squeeze out and all that so I'll just take a dab and put it on there like uh, you glue up any other item or bowl or whatnot, and the inside squeeze out will be able to get sanded because I will uh, sand it before I put the top and bottom on. So go ahead and glue up everything, and then I'll be back with you to uh, show you the setup what it looks like in the clamps. By the way, you might want to orientate the grain so it's uh, matching. That might make it look a little bit better. And then I will uh, show you that after it's all in the clamps. And then we'll work on sanding it. Then putting on the uh, top. Alright, so here's the two things clamped up. And I just put them between the uh, two things there. And line them up the best I could. And uh, I will be able to sand if it's not uh, perfectly glued together like that. And uh, they should hold. Now, uh, on this one piece of maple right here. The edge of the wood had a is from a planer where it uh, took out some of it, and so I had to use that piece because I didn't have any more. So I'll be able to fill that crack in with some maple sawdust after this glue up and all that to see what it looks like. 
and then it should be all right. So I'll let these here dry, and then I will be back with you to uh, sand glue on the uh, bottom and then create the top of them. All right, I have the salt and pepper shakers out of the uh, clamping pressure of uh, gluing it up, and they turn out good. They uh, are nice and strong, and I've, you know, tried to pull them apart and all that. Not super forced, but uh, they uh, seem to be in place. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I would glue on the bottom and the top, but I uh, am going to save that so I can finish the inside and it has two spots for the air to get to it so it can dry but uh, before I finish I'm going to go ahead and sand it and uh, you're probably wondering how would I get anything in there to sand it well uh, I would use the Dremel but I don't think I can get all the way into the middle with a nice uniform sanding and it's not like I need uh, that extensive of sanding to do so what I'm going to do is I don't have a dowel rod to uh, wrap some sandpaper around but the next best thing have one of these paint brushes and uh, I'll just use the handle of it that is a half inch dowel basically wrap around some uh, sandpaper and uh, go to work on the inside of the uh, salt and pepper shakers like that and I'll basically just do the best I can to get it nice and smooth in there and also I could use this little uh, round rasp that I have and uh, these are from Harbor Freight that I bought and I made these uh, wooden handles out of an actual 2x4 and uh, I'll have a video coming up on just a simple way to make a handle to anything and uh, it's nothing fancy of course you can probably buy better ones but for free I just uh, made a, a inch and a half by inch and a half uh, stock and I cut 45s off of each edge and then just use the rasp and file to round it over so that's all it is for that but this isn't that uh, big a diameter so uh, getting inside there and getting it all smooth might be a little tricky so I think with a uh, sanding stick is uh, sufficient enough so I'll go ahead and do that until it's nice and smooth and then I'll put some finish on it alright so I got them and uh, they don't have to be exactly perfect so I'm going to do now is put a finish on them and I'll be using some uh, shellac for that and uh, I had asked on the form because uh, I'm not too familiar with food safe finishes and what is and what's not so uh, I guess this is as long as you let it cure long enough so I will go ahead and just spray the inside of this and uh, first you want to shake it real well so I actually made a, a little clip of a jig that you can use to shake your cans the idea was from Steve Good, and uh, please do not take any of it seriously, uh, so here's the video. Alright, so here's the contraption that Steve Good created. Now, of course, my design is much more uh, inventive, I believe, and uh, much more high quality, because I used Pond and he used MDF. But you know, I don't want to take the, the, uh, no, this is a funny thing. But I want to take credit for such an uh, awesome gadget here because he did uh, create, I think he did, uh, he made a video. It's called What the Heck Is It? And uh, this here is a can of shellac, of course, and uh, I'm going to shake the darn thing. And you know, all you old guys get a, uh, hurt arms by shaking your cans as he says so he has designed a thing to where you put your drill up to it and as you can see there's a lot of movement in mine but you know it's good to have a little bit of movement and you spin it like that and that will shake your can up for you so you don't have to sit there and you know and keep shaking and shaking it and getting arthritis in your arm and all the bad things that you guys have and, and mine is just a simple design here I'll show you real quick I just have you know a box for the uh, can to go in some rubber bands around it I hadn't added an extension to the back there because you know it's uh, taller than I measured 
it didn't measure but a uh, little bit of crack there but you know you need some uh, breathing room for it so uh, that's good there so uh, this is the what the heck is it uh, I recreated and uh, again the design is from Steve good go check out his video uh, again this is just made as a little joke by the way so don't don't get mad <laughs> uh, Check out his video. He he uh, made it real nice looking, and uh, I just wanted to make one just to see how it work. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool looking. So I just thought I'd incorporate that in this video because I will be using this shellac on the uh, salt shakers. So thanks for watching. So I spread the insides of them, and I'll just let them sit and dry. And then when I come back, I will use my belt sander to sand off the uh, rest of the outside and put the top and bottom on. And then go to, uh, alright, a new thought has occurred to me. The shellac is dry, by the way. I am going to only do these for decoration because I've been having the time and a half figuring out uh, the way I will attach the tops and uh, be able to get them back off to refill these with salt and pepper. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue on the uh, tops and bottoms because uh, you know I can fill it and uh, use it for you know a while but uh, I think decoration will be alright so I will go ahead and glue on the tops and bottoms and then I will do the outside sanding but uh, so a little bit different of a plan but they will still look uh, very appealing and they will be able to sell on the table but they just won't be uh, useful so uh, that is the plan for the project so I will go ahead and glue those on and I'll be back with you to sand and then uh, finish the outside alright the glue is dry on the top and bottom of these and on the one that will be the salt I uh, well it's not going to be as you know but the decoration of the salt one I've started to sand it with the, uh, the belt sander and I'll show you that with the uh, salt shaker in this form, I have it with the uh, belt vertical as you can see. And it's just resting on this, but I won't completely rely on that. And I will just use a forward rotation as it goes. So I'll do a little bit here to show you. time will make it nice and smooth and I will be able to as you saw fill in the little crack that was from a uh, edge of the board that had sniped from uh, the planer uh, when I got the uh, board planed so I can just fill that in with sawdust before I uh, finish it and uh, sand it smooth so uh, the shaping of these alright so now to give it the finish and we'll just use shellac like we did for the inside of them like I expected the grain and the contrast really shines real nicely so you could easily make these functional but uh, for now it's uh, alright for me so these are the finished salt and pepper shakers thanks for watching this video of the salt and pepper shakers that we made uh, again they could have been uh, used uh, to put salt and pepper in them and uh, put on your food but they're uh, more of a decoration uh, towards the end of the project I realized it'd be a little difficult to you know get it all you know nice and safe to put the salt and pepper in because of all the glue and the finish and it's just hard to uh, sand the inside of it and get the finish you know on it and so it's a little difficult with that but uh, if I would have like turned something it would have been easier to make them uh, that way so uh, just cutting out the rings on the scroll saw and gluing them up to create the salt and pepper shakers so I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed this video anyways so uh, that was a, another one of the kitchen videos the next one I'll be making is a kitchen clock and then we'll store to steer away from the food stuff but 
more towards just kitchen stuff like uh, a kitchen clock. I'll be making a welcome sign, some napkin holders, and uh, stuff like that. So thanks for watching this video. I'm Dustin. And I'm Dylan. We'll see you next time on the Country Scroller.